Hello, T.M. Munib. How are you feeling today? Oh, it's uh, great. <coughs> it uh, looks like it's a mini world championship here. First time I'm seeing so many people and we are just uh, now embarking upon this journey of Toastmasters where <coughs> we now have a gathering emanating from this forum and also resembles like uh, a mini world championship. So I think it's a great feeling to be here today. Okay, and what if you win, you know, one of the three titles or, you know, possibly the biggest title <coughs> of the international you know, speech I, contest? Uh, that would be great. Uh, I am coming from travel and uh, my voice is uh, a little uh, low. Yeah. low. And uh, I'm not expecting anything from myself. I'm just participating today to just be part of this great gathering and uh, if anything comes as winning so I think there will be uh, an icing on the cake. Yeah, we, we, we are expecting something then if you're winning. <laughs> okay. okay. Best of yeah, luck for the you. contest. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to our next speaker, Toastmaster Oneer. PhD, are you ready for the challenge? PhD, are you ready for the challenge? Toastmaster, Muneer. <laughs> PhD is an acronym associated to Doctor of Philosophy. The same acronym is also associated with other terms like <coughs> parents have doubt. Doubt that can come from any source. Doubt that can take you to places where you don't want to be. And doubt that other terms like uh, <coughs> Urdu version. Can someone say what that is? Here you go. So you don't have to get to the bottom of that. So the terms that are there, all these terms, I have lived with those. I have experienced with those. Once I was coming from my workplace and I was going to home and I was in the middle of the road. And all of a sudden, I heard a car coming closer to me and closer to me. And I heard this screeching sound. <laughs> and it just stopped next to me. And I was thinking that uh, this person will come out and start yelling at me. But I forgot that uh, this was not Pakistan. This was Great Britain. And the guy came in and he said, are you okay, sir? And uh, I said, I'm fine. I just uh, came out and I looked. And the, when the guy came back, I noticed that I was in the middle of the road. I did not cross the zebra crossing. And uh, also, I was going in the wrong direction. My hostel was on the other direction. <coughs> When in life you are embarking upon a journey, you prepare yourself for the task. And when, when you have this task in hand, you just look and plan for yourself. And there is a saying that if you fail to plan, you, you, you plan to fail. Well, when I was going for a PhD, my father said, Unib, you know how to study in the semester system. So you can do it. With his that assurance, I went out and I took three subjects in the first semester. <coughs> One was uh, numeric controls requiring automatic machine tool language. Never use machine tool language, never use computer in my life. Second course was uh, automatic control and all the knowledge that I had was three pages of uh, notes that our teacher gave. And the third 
course was statistical quality control, never studied statistics in my whole life. And the result was obvious. My supervisor called me through her, her uh, secretary and she just sent a note, no WhatsApp messages in those days. So she scribbled a note, Marvin wants to see you, take an appointment. I took an appointment, went to meet him, <coughs> say, hey Mohammed, take a seat, how are you doing? I took seat and I said, I'm doing fine. He said, you are not doing fine, you are actually doing bad. <laughs> 65 points in your first task midterm, this is not the kind of performance that is expected from a PhD student. More I tried to convince him, worse it got. So I stopped convincing him and I said, I'll do my best. I just came out and tried to analyze what was happening. I just looked at myself and tried to compare with the other colleagues. And one of the courses, numeric control, I had a Taiwani colleague and I said, well, you are doing brilliant in all your assignments. What do you do? And he said, I'm manager. I said, manager of what? He said, manager of numerical control machine factory. I said, well, you are studying the medical control subject. And he said, oh, this is my first semester, so I just took an easy course. Another course, automatic control. There was a Chinese student. Everyone would flunk. Everyone would fail to solve, and he would just solve. And I said, what do you do? And I said, <coughs> well, how you going to become so intelligent? He said, I, still, I teach this. I said, you teach what? He said, I teach automatic control. I said, where? Then back in China. I said, what are you doing here? He said, just to improve my English. <laughs> <laughs> so in the next semester, after getting grades of C, A, B, and B, which is not acceptable for a PhD student, I pulled myself up and took some other courses. One of them was engineering mechanics, still struggling. And in one of the classes, I was still gloomy coming out of the class. I was sad going out of the class. There was a guy who pulled me from the shoulder. And I came back and said, Muhammad, ya ki? I said, I'm fine. And I looked at it. A guy who was uh, six feet six, Abdullah Marumi. And he said, Muhammad, these are my notes, come and I give you assistance. I have studied all that. Take it, whenever you need it, you can just use it. I just took his file and just put it away until I was stuck in my assignment. And I just took this, uh, his notes out. And here I was, I was able to spend more time on other, on other courses. In our life, sometimes help comes from places where we, where we least expect. As this Latin saying goes, fortune favors the prepared mind. For any task at hand, if you give respect to the task, plan well, and take incremental steps, success will be at your doorsteps. Madam Father's Chair.